KC2 IRV here again. I haven't made a video in a while. Life gets in the way. But um, I wanted to uh, begin documenting my path for simulcast. Um, right now I have four simulcast sites up on my UHF system. All using um, Radio Think Client modules as I've uh, <clears throat> documented in the past. So, but... Um, there has been a recent development with the Radio Thin Client modules where the company that commercially produced them is no longer in business. And the person that did does produce them, did produce them for that company, which was Micronode International, is still producing them. But I'm not sure for how much longer. So that caused me to want to get into the original version of that product, which was the do-it-yourself voter board. Um, and this is a completed board. So this board took me a, a couple of days to put together, uh, just picking at it. And to give you a little backstory on this board, this board is the brainchild of... Uh, Jim Dixon, who is now a silent key, he came up with, and with help from a few other people, but he mainly came up with the software and the hardware that um, is this board. Now, I really want to get more hams aware <clears throat> of the, the all-star slash asterisk voter module and this board and what they can do, especially for clubs and repeater owners, the connectivity that it can add and the flexibility it can add to a repeater system and also allowing you to simulcast as well as uh, adding voting that can be done reliably and uh, flawlessly, in my opinion, over Ethernet. So, uh, this board um, can be... You can purchase... The actual circuit boards, I shouldn't say purchase, you can have the circuit boards made. Um, the company that I prefer to you is a company called PCB Way. Uh, all of the information for this is contained on the on all, uh, the All Star Wiki. Um, and uh, hang on just a second. in the basement, so I had to shut my furnace off before it started running and causing all sorts of noise. I'm not the greatest videographer, you know, I don't really edit these things, I just kind of record them, put them up. So, anyway, so where was I? The, uh, so there, the boards can be had from China, a company in China called PCB Way. Excellent, high-quality company. The All-Star Wiki contains all of the information all of the uh, files to have the, this board made in uh, at any well, any company who makes PCBs, the Gerber files, which are the files that are the uh, the drawings that can be used to make these boards by just about anyone. <clears throat> so um, that's what I did. I had five of these boards made, and it costs about uh, fifty dollars U.S. with shipping, and uh, the rest of the parts cost around another estimate on the high side between 150 and 175 dollars per board to put a complete board together here um, unfortunately because this is a entirely through hole design there are some components that are now obsolete in the through hole package types um, that are uh, you just can't get or I should say get through normal means Two of those are, uh, what is this, IC6 over here, and IC14. Um, those two ICs, you can still get in their surface mount. You can get them in the surface mount packages, but not in through hole. These I got off of eBay. Um, I currently have a solution for that. 
It's basically uh, using a surface mount to dip adapter. But, um, you know, they're working like they should. Um, there's some other components on here I had to change from the original bill of materials. These connectors, the part numbers are no longer valid. Um, the ferrite beads, I actually got those off of Amazon, surprisingly enough, from, from Uxell, U-X-C-E-L-L. They had the right beads. And a couple of capacitors, a couple of resistors, but, <clears throat> you know, as long as you substitute like for like, you don't have that problem. Um, so the one thing that may daunt some people is that you actually, this uses a uh, company called Microchip. It uses a, a, a PIC microcontroller, which is this guy right here. Um, that microcontroller, when you put this together, the microcontroller is blank. There's nothing in it. It needs programming. So uh, you need to program it. You initially need to program it um, with a bootloader. And you do that through this, this connector over here, which uses a programmer called a pick, you know, usually a pick kit or pick kit three. I have this is a pick kit three. And uh, it's, a, it's a USB, it comes with a USB cable, and it comes with a ribbon cable with the pin header and everything that plugs right on that connector. So, and that's like 25 bucks. Once you have that, and have the software installed, you can program the pick. But I know with people that, some people who are completely initiated with that, might be a little daunting. But there is, uh, the information on, on the wiki, on the Ulster wiki is absolutely excellent and is correct for getting that done. And once you do it, you'll be like, oh, now that wasn't that hard at all. So, that is actually pretty easy. Um, f functionally, except for a few small features, tiny, tiny little improvements, this is functionally identical to the Radio Thin Client module. The Radio Thin Client module has a few um, advantages. One, it's very small, it's very compact. Two, you just order it and configure it, it's ready to go. There's no pick programming. Of course, um, if you're me and do something stupid and blow the pickup and then have to surface mount solder a new one in, then you have to program it. So um, that's a story for another time. <clears throat> so, But uh, this board is, right now, is functioning as a uh, voting receiver on my system. I have it connected just to a small... Small Motorola radio. We can pan up. Look at the mess that is my bench. Small Motorola radio here. And uh, I also have a, a GPS oscillator that's uh, that's pretty much right over here. That's providing me my one pulse per second NEMA data. So, um, but yes, these can do uh, act fantastically well in boating applications. Um, if you have good, solid internet connections, you can actually vote and simulcast over the internet without a problem. I'm doing it on two of my sites. Um, and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a great little product, you know. Um, but I don't think enough hams have seen it, and it's still kind of niche, and because of its perceived complexity, it's rather uh, it's perceived complexity. It's it's kind of rather you know overlooked, you know. So, but um, you know, it's something I've been familiar with. I work in the public safety radio industry, so I'm familiar with a lot of these technologies, especially simulcast. I've done IP simulcast from several major manufacturers. Um, but this, uh, definitely allows the average ham, average club to have IP voting and IP simulcast. So, and these units, um, 
are pretty easy to set up for the most part. I actually have a wiki, and it doesn't have any information specific to the voter board, but it deals a lot with the RTCM, but 99% of the stuff on there also uh, will carry over to the voter board. Um, the, it's a wiki. On, I'm going to leave a link in the description to it that gives you pretty much all the information to set up um, a simulcast system. But it doesn't have to be simulcast. It could be just simply voting. You can also use these as a standalone repeater audio interface where the so you have a an all star asterisk all star server, you know, in one one location, and uh, you want to have an audio connection to uh, to another resource, a repeater, a remote base, something along those lines, and uh, you know you don't want to have to run a pi or run another inst you know run another instance of all star and another node number. This will give you that connectivity. Um, and it's, you know, it, it works very well, but, uh, this is just kind of an overview of this product and it just to kind of get people who aren't acquainted with it, get their feet wet in it, but it, um, it's, uh, it takes some time to build, but it definitely, uh, it definitely is worth it if you want to get into IP voting and especially simulcast. One very uh, important um, thing to note with simulcast, though, is that this uh, crystal here, right here, 9.6 megahertz oscillator, um, when you simulcast with this, the PL tones are generated in, uh, basically in the pick. Um, and their accuracy is based off of this little teeny crystal right here. Just like 30 parts per million for accuracy, something like that, which you know, nowhere near what you need. Um, there is another board that you can use, that you can build. Uh, I cook, cooked it up. It was actually a ripoff of a uh, MSF 5000 ultra high stability uh, oscillator phase lock loop board that I uh, kind of modified and bent to my will, and. Um, that gives you a GPS locked 9.6 megahertz into the pick, which will then allow your PL tones to be synchronized. But if you're just using this in a voting situation, um, you're not going to have any problem because uh, you don't need that. The only time you would need that is if you need the 9.6 megahertz GPS locked oscillator is if you're... Uh, transmitting simulcast and transmitting a PL tone. If you're not transmitting a PL tone for whatever reason, you don't need that. It's just because of the PL tone generation. Um but without if you're not transmitting a PL tone, you don't you don't need that. So um if anyone has any questions or wants any more information on this, more information on my particular project, um I would be Happy to help. So that's it for now, just for this introduction.